Hi, everyone. Well, today I'm very excited about our guest because um, her name is Raven Willow, and uh, she is a fully accredited credit at Reiki master, energy psychologist, psychic empath, and I am so interested in finding out about many of those subjects. And um, so with that, we're going to get right to it. And Raven, would you like to tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, so basically, I've, I've known I'm gifted how whatever you want to call it since I was a child like when I would tell my mom there's a monster in the closet it's because there was a monster in the closet well to me it was a monster mm -hmm. um I'm not sure what it was <laughs> looking back but yeah. anyway um so I've seen felt heard things all around me since I was a child and I never have ever fit into society so mm -hmm. I, I don't, uh, I don't people very good because I don't understand, uh, the rage and the anger and, and these things that come off of people. Mm -hmm. So but you feel even it. within like, that's it. You feel it. That yeah. Way. Oh mm -hmm. yeah. Because I'm an empath. Yeah. So going out in public is very draining. For me, I have to put up a lot of blockers and yes. you know have things because like oh man, yeah. you know it's too much coming at you. Um, okay, let's start with some simple things to explain. Well, they're not simple, but some things to explain to people that are hearing some of these ideas for the first time. So you mentioned what's called a star seed, which is your yep. universal DNA. What is that? every human is part of universal dna we are all we all have some form of they like to be called beings by the way not aliens mm -hmm. but we all have some form of that genetic code in us all of us mm -hmm. so we all have past lives throughout other places other times mm -hmm. and that information is now available, back available to humankind through the Akashic Records. So I I already could see and, and feel that stuff reading people and their past lives. And so I just went there and got like fully accredited by a, a guy in Tibet. And oh, awesome. exciting. Explain <laughs> yeah. to our so, audience yeah. what the Akashic Records are. So it's the history of everything that's ever lived of all time throughout all lives, through all existence. And like, it's a never ending library of everything and knowledge of the universe mm -hmm. and stories of the universe. Like it's everything. Right. So like as a psychic, when I go into the records, like you ask to go in and you're taken in it presents itself to me like a never-ending library because I am a history nerd and I love books and um so that's and even when I'm in there like I'm I'm getting like the history in my head of that actual event in history like I already know mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. so it, it's weird so I know other people that go in there and they'll see like gears because they're very uh, mathematical. Mm -hmm. Their brains are very mathematical. So it presents itself in different ways, but the knowledge you have to ask the questions and then wait to get the answer back. And, and sometimes you'll be told you yeah. can't have it. Yeah. Do you do Sorry. that during a meditation state? Like do you go into the quiet to do that? Yeah. I would think. Yeah. That would make yeah. sense. So I, I'm going to, I totally am on the same page with you, <clears throat> that there's a universal energy and universal history, and we're all part of the same source, and et cetera, et cetera. So um, years ago, uh, when I was, I was in therapy with this particular uh, psychiatrist, and halfway through um, our treatments, you know, so many sessions in, he mentioned a book 
called Many Lives, Many Masters. You might have heard of it by Dr. Brian Weiss. And it was interesting because it was a psychiatrist that had a patient that by talking to this patient and putting her in a hypnotic state, he totally believed that she had lived many lives. Now for a psychiatric yeah. scientific man to grasp that more spiritual universal type thought, I thought was amazing. That was a leap. By well, that. one, he was already there because he was doing hypnotherapy. Mm -hmm. So he's already aware that you could tap into, into the right. subconscious right. and yeah. 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 So, so yeah. So that intrigues me. And um, <clears throat> you talk about a school of thought called anthroposophy, anthroposophy, how do you pronounce that? Anthroposophy, the Kasich records that, you know, there's a school of thought on that, right? What you just said, that it's all the universal events, thoughts, all words, the universe, everything. Yeah. yeah, everything, every yeah. life form, all of your stories, right. even down to the little bio life forms, they have a story too. <laughs> Yeah. So they call them uh, soul contracts. Mm -hmm. uh, when you reincarnate, you make your life, you write your life, you write what's going to happen in that life. Right. And everybody, that's a, that's a very hard lesson for humans yeah. to grasp yeah. and understand that, yeah, all, all of the things that have happened in your life you wrote that in your life and it has right. happened for a reason. Yes, it has. Is it the Hindus, the is it the the Hindus that believe in uh, reincarnation and coming back many times? I believe it's the Hindus, am I wrong? Yeah. Buddhists too. Buddhists, believe, yeah. yeah. The, the Asian type <clears throat> religion. Yeah. So I totally believe that and the whole deja vu concept, you know, like I've been here before type thing. Yeah. But um, so a lot of time, a lot of time is spent trying to figure out <clears throat> why we are here, what is our purpose, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So yes. <clears throat> in order to understand that, I think you have to understand <clears throat> what the origin of your soul is. Do you agree with that? Yeah. Yeah, you have to have the real story because, you know, and I'm not discounting anybody's beliefs at all. Like, I have friends of all different religious backgrounds. Do your thing. Rock your stuff. <laughs> I don't care, you know. Um, but religion does hold people back a lot from getting that full truth of why you are really here. Mm -hmm. Um and we're all really here to raise the vibrations of humanity and heal mm -hmm. each other and heal the earth. That's that where we're all correct. here. That sounds correct. And everybody fast. has their own job to do within that because everybody yes. has their own, like everybody's got their own thing. Yeah. And some people are awake and some people are asleep. That's how I feel. Yes. And I know that for myself, yes. you know, the first half of my life, I was not awake. You know, I yeah. was acting out things that were told to me as if they were true, you know, and uh, I had to combat many things that women do as far as getting their um, recognition as a person, a full 100% person, not yeah. partial person. And, you know, I have abuse yeah. by men. I had abusive parents. And um, I had a lot of trauma. I wrote down a lot of stuff yeah. for you. Oh, I can't wait to do that. Let's do that before I run out of time. So one of the things you do, talk about that. When you have somebody's birthday. Uh, and a so this is how I read people. <laughs> I, I am a little bit drained. Sorry, you can see like my eyes are a bit bloodshot. And it's I have okay. hives around my eyes. If you oh, pay yeah. close attention. <laughs> it oh, was a day you look yesterday. Good. I. I take care of my elderly mom and, and so oh, yeah. like okay. psychics have to, we have to watch ourselves to take care of ourselves and watch our energy. Like when we get drained, then it's like, yeah, I'm not mm -hmm. reading nobody's nothing. You know what I'm saying? Okay. But um, 
I, uh, one, because I am drained, I'm going to ask first, do you know anybody named Arthur? I do know someone, I did know someone named Art, who's deceased. Art. Mm -hmm. Art. Okay. Yeah. Be short for Arthur. Okay. I think so. Yeah. That it's, I was just getting a name and I was mm -hmm. like, okay. So I wrote it down. Yeah. Um, I picked up a tidy bit on like universal stuff. If you are an Andromeda and star seed, I didn't, most people have like multiple things because mm -hmm. we've had to descend to come to earth to live in right. the third dimension. Right. But though there will be more there for sure. Mm -hmm. um, like I put that you got married and did the family thing. Mm -hmm. which most people your age did so you know yeah. call me in you know that's just general well, information I'm a that's boomer. fine I'm a boomer. um yeah <laughs> yeah um and then do you know somebody named betsy um i don't think so unless it's someone i forgot about no i just met a new person named betsy yeah i, I only know her a few months yeah because I wrote down friend Betsy. That's well, all. Well, then I got. she like, is I'm a just new friend. Very brief statements because she I'm is a new really friend, groggy. and we have a lot in common. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'm glad that I'm, at least I'm picking up on you and not in some randomness. Part. So this is good. This is good. good yeah. <laughs> um, but then I just picked up like you when you were little. I was like, ooh, I was like, there's some darkness flight. I saw like this house and like, and I'm not talking like some low level wonky on like, if you want to call them demons, whatever you want to mm -hmm. call them. I'm talking, has some juice. Yeah. Messed with a lot, lot of people, like chaos everywhere, people afraid. Things just it, like a dark. Probably somebody had like attachment or it just got bad. It got abandonment. Bad. abandonment. It got really bad. I will tell you when I was five and my brother was four, my parents had their third child. And according to them, there was no one to take care of us while my mother went to the hospital in that first few days of a newborn. So they put us in an orphanage. They put us, that's the darkness. And the nuns, of course, are all in black. And we did not understand what was happening. And we were there for five days. So the abandonment and the trauma for that affected us deeply. And that might be the darkness that you're seeing at a young age. Yeah, it was just like yeah. enveloping and and. If it's in a place like that, especially in the time frame, mm -hmm. it did not have good energy. There probably was like a demon type spirit there because Absolutely. those children were not treated well. So yeah. like, yeah, just, and just the it was feeling just of being abandoned, you know, you just, what did I yeah. do? <laughs> yeah. The, and the seeds of uh, low self-worth, of course, would be there because you know, you would feel not good enough. I did something wrong that they put right. us in this place. <laughs> right. So you're, you're, you're right on there. Yeah. Yeah. And I I got like some personal things. Like, it's okay. Go ahead. Um, like assaulted, raped, you know, those kind of things. I don't want to like, I, I, go what, there was an attempt scary right? on people's well, personal well, stories. Right. I, but I'm amazed. Uh, that kind of attempted, thing. Attempted rape at 19. I was able to not be raped, but I was physically assaulted by the boy, man, whatever. So that happened. And then there was um, a lot of domestic violence in uh, two marriages. The two horrible. Yeah. Yeah, just like you're yeah. getting all the vibes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, those darn guys, don't get me started well, on them. Well, I will know. say this kind of fits. My first book was called Raised by Wolves, Trapped by Demons. And the wolves were my parents and the demons were, my, were the men in my life. 
And then also, as I dug deeper, I realized the demons were in me. So that's how I wrote my first book. So it kind of fits. That's nice. That is awesome. Oh, my gosh. I have to, like, high five on Zoom. Yeah, there. <laughs> that, I, that is awesome because I'm a writer. So, like, any time somebody's, like, I've written. Yeah, I'm gonna read this. I need I'm to read send this. It to you. Well, I send you the Kindle. Cry, but oh, you will but cry. This is like this your book. actual true story. <laughs> actual true story, and I use real names, okay. and I don't hold back any punches. Ooh, you went there. Oh my gosh, there. you go, girl. I'll tell you oh, real quick. My one nephew. I am liking you. My one nephew and his girlfriend are struggling with drug addiction, and when you're doing that, sometimes you get in trouble with the law. And the girlfriend oh, was in jail yeah. for a short time. I don't know how long she was in there, a few months, whatever. And he gave her my book to read. And when he came to see her on a visit, she had been, she had read the whole book. And he, she said, your aunt is a badass. Because <laughs> of course it talks about my addiction and my recovery, et cetera. And uh, yeah, she ended up getting in contact with me. It was amazing. You know, it's just amazing. I love what, like, I'm, if, if people really want to know what I believe in, like, I pretty much call myself a pagan, but I am very much sacred feminine. Mm -hmm. And so anytime women are just like, I'm just like, uh-huh. Yeah, you'll love the book. You'll love it. I promise. So, yeah, you saw, you saw the darkness and, um, how about uh, past lives? You think I had a few of those? You've had a lot. Yeah, I did get like I saw the Andromeda Starseed. So if you were there, you came from a very high place and descended down through many lives to even be able to live on Earth. And then that would have meant that you started out probably with the Anunnaki, which I was a member of that. So I know that story, mm -hmm. um, that was the first starts of human, like, Existence. intelligence Intelligent. and building and knowledge and giving the homo sapiens knowledge. And um, mm -hmm. the Anunnaki are bashed a lot by some people and they've got the story wrong like life is not easy to create and like yeah mistakes are made and like some mm -hmm. people had to like kill off their kids because they just like went dark side like there's light and dark in everything mm -hmm. and you know it's you can't vilify a whole like group of people mm -hmm. when they're trying to like build up something and it's like yeah there was genetic engineering yep absolutely but it it wasn't a slave race as in like humanity would picture a slave race mm -hmm. a humanity slave race mm -hmm. like yes they were genetically engineered to mine gold but it was not gold like we get gold mm -hmm. it was white powder gold because it's a power superconductor it heals dna it heals cells it uh is a transponder it it can do a lot of things and it can give pure clean energy too and is so, that found in the earth that kind yes. of gold? so so gold did did need to be mined and then it needs to go through a process to get it to white gold mm -hmm. but it's kind of like you have to kind of think about it like well look at today right people need stuff people need a car well somebody's got to build that freaking car Mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. yeah they genetically engineered some people to be able to do these jobs mm -hmm. because they were trying to create life so mm -hmm. it, it's not like how humanity would view slavery in mm -hmm. humanity's terms today in the 20th like, century 19th century yeah you right can't there. even think yeah. of it in the same way because it's not current even history current history from another is, universe yeah, yeah i think current history is like the last 2000 years that's like current, mm -hmm. but we go back millions. Yeah, yeah. Oh, good zillion. Yeah, this yeah. is never ending. Yeah. 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 So I really, you know, you're touching base with a lot of things I, I do uh, dabble in and straight out believe in. And um, so that's the question. I know a lot of people question why they are here. And um, for me, uh, 
I, when I got sober and I started sponsoring women and doing that kind of thing, I found a purpose right there, which was helping women in pain and, you know, early recovery, which is very hard and painful. Yeah. And then um, after, oh, I don't know, 30 years in AA or whatever, I kind of went a little different path, not just straight AA. I went more spiritual in the sense that I wanted people to uh, find out their life lesson. And the way I think you find your purpose is by actions. Like if you do things and you get a positive feeling back from that, to me, you're doing what you're supposed to do. Does that make sense? Yeah. 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 Uh, And somebody, some people have, like everybody has their job to do their thing. And so it's, it's very important that I, and I, you know, my mom is in your generation. Like mm-hmm. She's not in as great shape as you are, sadly. <laughs> um, she's on her way out. But, um, mm-hmm. you know, your generation was very boxed. <laughs> like, here's the nuclear yes. family, and this is what yes. you are. This is what you're uh, supposed to do. It's very important to let people and kids especially learn and grow and find out who they actually are. Mm-hmm. and not be forcing relationships and babies and you got to do this and you got to do that like yeah. find yourself find yourself and I then wasn't do allowed the to do that i my yeah. childhood was i know yeah that's sad and i was yeah. a prisoner in my own home and to escape yeah. i had to get married just to escape which yeah a lot that's, of women did. that happened to oh well, yeah and then there's just one bad situation to another one Yes, yes, I took a lot of wrong turns, but I also felt I had no choice at the time. So, no, that's what I'm saying. Society forced women into like one crappy situation to and and another one to get away from one. It's done that a lot. So, being in the same room with me right now, so to speak, um, do the um, vibrations you got from the picture, et cetera. Do they line up with the person you see in front of you? If you know what I mean, to get that same feeling. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Just like watch, always watch your own energy because once those bad things know you, they know you. So you always have to just like be very present of yourself and like having boundaries and like nobody crosses those boundaries nothing crosses those boundaries and if something's not respecting it no matter if it's living dead whatever it's not good yeah for decades I um my boundaries were not good really yeah I had to get hurt over and over again yeah you had to I had to die (laughs) I like some people have to learn the hard way and especially like if it's hard not to be controlling of your own life, especially when you've gone through a lot of things. And like, I, I am even daily, like being forced to like, let go of control, let go, let go of control, just stop. And it is so hard oh yeah it's that was really my hard. my that still is my biggest thing is that need to control <clears throat> yeah. because I need to control to feel safe because I was didn't yeah. feel safe as a child yeah I exactly. didn't feel safe as <laughs> yeah. an adult so the yeah. more my life went on the more I felt yeah. the answer was to be in control and even now I'm like the most organized yeah. person you ever met in your life but if I yeah have something that's what people need to realize yeah it it does that to everybody and the more bad you encounter the more you come into yourself and feel like you have nobody or anything and then you become like like your own person just depending on yourself because you don't you know like you have to people need to realize you have to change the energy with inside you too you have to get out of that mindset 
and take right. yourself somewhere else so that right. the good can start coming in. Yeah. It's really hard to do. Like the brain, I had to do it. Our minister, we go to a non-religious community. It's not a religion. It's a spiritual community. And he always says like, the brain is the worst place to go for direction. <laughs> Yeah. You go to your heart, yeah. you go to the, you know, you, you yep. do some tapping and the chakras and all that stuff. Yep. So what, is there anything from my past life that I need to know for this life? What do you think? Just don't let that darkness follow you. Yeah. Like I could dig into you further. I get like a lot of past life stuff on you because there's a lot. I bet. And like, even and by the way, life. yeah, go ahead. Yeah, you have a lot going on. And by <laughs> the way, you're probably a medium because if I actually look at you and don't look at, I'm trained to look at the screen because I. I'm mm -hmm. used to like teaching yeah. and then doing podcasts, mm -hmm. but if I actually like look at you you have so many things like moving around your space so hmm. you're either a medium or they're your guides or guides. whatever's I but I believe that I've... well when you read the book you will see that I must have had outside forces um there for me a lot of times a lot of times so what do I need okay to feel? that, yeah, that makes sense because okay. it's big energy it's big energy. What it, it, yeah. yeah. So yeah. I'm like, you're either a medium or those are your guides. Yeah. Gotcha. So what do I need to heal <clears throat> from past trauma? So you probably have gone through a lot of that work, but like yeah. somebody, somebody in your family, like I even got like, he's, he, he, and I don't know if it was a direct relative because like I say, I'm just drifting in and out of pieces, <laughs> like bits and pieces of you because I'm way tired today. <laughs> okay. um, he, he hated women, like was very violent toward, like, like I wouldn't be surprised if he was a killer. There's something yeah. in your history with that. Yeah. So horrible person <laughs> so you have to read I, me again I have to read the book because then you'll really know it <laughs> well no yes. I don't want to read the book before I read you because then that would just put yeah. like I would have read you first and then yeah. and then see if you were the right <laughs> you will be. Yeah. yeah I don't like to have information when I read people I just so we like, you know you I, like, you have do. so many um things going on with your energy right? That you must have to find times to rest, like during the day or meditate or just find a quiet space because otherwise I don't know how you last. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I have a lot of alone time because I'm an empath. Yeah. But I so just, you have. Yeah. Yeah. If, if I... And I, I was married once. I will never get married again because I am never going to pay to break up with somebody and kick them out of my freaking life ever again. <laughs> but yeah, moving on, I will never do it again. It was a horrible experience too. Yeah. But I've been single ever since. And this has been year, like past 15 years. I don't even know. A long time. <laughs> Still, like dated people off and on through these 15, 17 years. But like, mm -hmm. I am perfect. Like, I can't be with somebody that doesn't understand what I am and how to help me. They mm -hmm. have to be an equal to me. Otherwise, it's just a detriment to me. So I'm perfectly cool. Just like, mm -hmm. I have my friends and I have my people. Like, I'm not alone, but like, yeah, yeah, like a relationship. Yeah, you have to be very guarded when you're someone yeah. like me. Who you I'm going to jump life. into a, yeah. another topic because I relate to this so strongly. And it's even going to be uh, my next book. Uh, my next book is going to be called um, The Anatomy of an Alien. And why is because I have never had 
any kind of health problem that has not turned out to be something the doctor has never seen before. <laughs> that's your answer right there. It's okay. Yes. That's, it's, I have pancreatitis. It took them seven years. Like I kept telling doctors, something is wrong. Something is wrong. They kept running the blood tests and doing the ultrasound and the gallbladder and blah, blah, blah. Nothing. Mm -hmm. I can't see them. Nothing, yes. nothing, nothing. Mm -hmm. Go, go, go. Just get out of our face. Yeah. And then like my friend just happened to work in the radiology department at the hospital. Mm -hmm. And she's like, go to your primary doctor and tell him to order you a height of scan. And yeah. it's where they like inject your gallbladder with stuff to force it to function. And then they watch it mm -hmm. and you, it's, it's a really long process. Mm -hmm. And it was so painful that I was just like tears and I was just mm. shaking and the guy kept asking, do you want me to stop? Do you want me to stop? And I'm like, no, because this is finally, somebody is seeing that there's something wrong with me. And I just mm -hmm. sat there and endured it for, mm -hmm. I, I was like, I don't even know how long it was horrible. But then they were like, whoa, like girls gallbladder is just like not working at all. Mm -hmm. And so then they're like, then all of a sudden they're like, taken biopsies of my pancreas and my liver. I have severe pancreatitis. I have to take 50,000, I can't remember, it's not milligrams, but however it's measured, mm -hmm. of enzymes three times a day mm -hmm. to not have a gut ache. Correct. So yeah. that is, doctors do that all the time oh, for weird diseases that like mm -hmm. the one where the little fibery things come out of people's skin. It's like mer mm -hmm. Mergellins, Mergellins, or I can't say it correctly, but that. weird things like that, inflammatory yeah. diseases, yes. dietary I, I diseases. I will yep. tell you real, like just a snippet of some of my things. I had breast cancer. I'm six years cancer free. I did a double mastectomy. I did not think uh, deeply enough about it. And I just got implants without really thinking about it. That's on me. Reaction was horrible. Surgeries, uh, all kinds of stuff for a couple of years. And then I yeah. said, take them out, take them out. My body is rejecting them. So he did. Yeah. Um, I had a stomach infection, which got so bad. They had to remove 85% of my stomach. That's a lot. And my, um, my one surgeon said to me, I don't know how you digest food. I don't. And then the last one that's kind of epic, my um, gynecologist, I had polyps and he did the tests he had to do. And he said, you don't just have polyps, you have a factory. <laughs> yeah. You have a factory. I said, so he started talking about different ways to approach it and I said, just do a total hysterectomy because I had already gone through the change of life. And he said to me, this is honest truth. Can I send your uterus to John Hopkins? <laughs> I want to write a paper on it. <laughs> so I said, you know, I'm going to write a book and it's going to be called. And then he published a paper on it. He wrote a paper on it and sent my uterus to John Hopkins. <laughs> So that deserves That's, a book. I mean, those three yes, things. Are your uterus deserves a book. Yes, it does. Yeah. Yes. Not just that, but my whole body. So I have never, yeah. every time we leave any type of doctor, as we walk to the car, I say to my husband, because the doctor has just told me he never saw this before or it's uncommon. Yep. And I'll go, are you surprised? And he'll go, nope. Yep. <laughs> so that there's something going on there too. And um, I think yeah. in, in writing that book, I'll figure it out. <laughs> yeah. So but the, that's it, even the like aliens come in. The hives that are around my eyes right now, mm -hmm. my dermatologist won't listen to me. We get mm -hmm. really bad air where I live and more people have just like descended upon our valley. Mm -hmm. And it's, I live in the mountains and the it's a valley in a bowl. And yeah. it just, all the smog just sits here in the winter. And then we get this fog that settles in 
and I've I've been wearing a mask long before people were wearing masks COVID, because of the mm-hmm. air. Yeah. But now it's gotten so bad that if I go outside and I have to go outside with my dogs because we have mountain lions around, <laughs> I break I'm breaking out in hives. Like my eyes last night were swollen shut. Like yeah. I was fighting and taking all kinds yeah. of stuff to like be able to be here today, but I can't get my dermatologist to listen that it's the freaking air. He's like, yeah. oh, it's like your makeup or nail polish or something like, right, you know? and then, like, I will tell you this last thing. Cause we're, we're running out of time. <clears throat> okay. I had fluid building up. This is just last year, fluid building up in my abdomen, abdomen in between where the breasts were taking, taught, taken away and my stomach was reduced. And in between that, I had this buildup of fluid and I kept addressing it with different doctors and they just brushed it off. So finally, I, I just had enough and I put my foot down and I went to the surgeon and he got out a syringe with a, you know, a container about that big. He took four syringes of fluid out four uh is it I mean, spinal fluid really? what kind of fluid? no no from my stomach from my stomach there was a buildup now it could be um my lymphatic system yeah but oh, yeah I, that's your I lymphatic had a, system i had yeah. to push it yeah i had to push it so we have to have another session because there's so much i want to get into with you I even published an article on my website about symptoms that different star seeds go through and they do overlap a lot of them, but that's because people have descended through a lot of different things. But I, I have a thing that I wrote (laughs) for alien people. (laughs) So yeah, you're on YouTube, correct? You have a YouTube channel? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And what do we look up? Does Raven Williams or well, so everything is on my website. So mm-hmm. it's, you know, the www. Psychic Empath Raven Willow.com. Okay. I'll my put YouTube that in the link notes. is there. My Instagram note is there. I mm-hmm. can chat I'll it to put you. Put all so that in. It. 